You are listening to the Jewel City Podcast. You can join us in person Sundays at 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. We have something for all people and all ages. Or join our live stream at 10 a.m. In this podcast, we'll hear a message from Pastor Robert. You know, I woke up this morning and, and I laid there and I never preached the same message twice except for these Christmas uh, presentations. But uh, the Lord kind of, and I'm preaching the same message, but I want to drive a little uh, different direction. And uh, the Lord will rescue you. The Lord will deliver you. The Lord will set you free. I wrote a uh, card to a young man this week that's uh, in prison for several years. And uh, I wrote in that card and I said to him, it's only by God's grace that I'm not where you're at. Sometimes we do things and we don't get caught and others do. So it's only by God's grace and, and prayers of a mother and father that I'm not locked up or not dead. So I want you to know today that God will rescue you no matter where you're at. My wife and I was on the speakerphone talking to another young man that I led to the Lord a couple weeks ago at his grandmother's funeral. And he left there and he checked himself into a rehab. And it's been a couple weeks and he called us, I think it was Thursday night. And uh, just to hear his voice and hear the excitement. And he said, I know I've said it before, but he said, this time I'm not going back because he met the Lord Jesus Christ. Emmanuel, go ahead and give God a hand clap of praise. So maybe you're here this morning and you look all lily white. and You look clean and everybody thinks you got it going on. Well, I know better and God knows better because we're human. We all have problems. We all have struggles. We all have difficulties. So the title of the message is Born to Conquer the Grave. In Matthew chapter one, verse 23, behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Father, bless the reading of your word today, God. The Holy Spirit, I pray that you would walk up and down every aisle and touch every heart here today. And Lord, it'd be my prayer that not a one of us would leave without knowing you in a personal relationship. And Holy Spirit, I would ask today that you would deliver people from struggles, from fears, from doubts. Father, have your way here today. Touch all of our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray, and amen. God with us, can you imagine that? Emmanuel, God of creation, the very God that hung the moon and the stars is with you today. God knows all your pain and all your struggles and all your doubts. He knows your hurts. He knows your disappointments. He knows when you're discouraged. God with us. The God that created every living thing is in this room. That is amazing. If we read over in Genesis chapter one, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. It wasn't the big bang. We're not monkeys. We're God's children, God's creation. And the earth was without form and void and, and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said, let there be light and there was light. And I pray today that the darkness in your life, 
that you would experience the light of Jesus today. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And when you've truly had an encounter with God, your life will never be the same. And I believe I'm speaking mostly to Christians today that are struggling with sin and problems in your life. And I'm here to tell you that God will touch you as you heard on the play, they said their uncle, their dad said, if you draw nigh unto God, God will draw nigh unto us. That's God's word. That's scripture. If you'll draw nigh to God and, and humble yourself and lay your pride aside and say, God, here I am. I'm your son, I'm your daughter, but I got issues. I've got problems. God will draw nigh unto you. So the title is Born to Conquer the Grave, the grave of death. But I believe he was born also, not only to conquer the grave of death for him and for you and I, but the graves of life. The Bible said this is not our home. We are but pilgrims passing through. And life is so very short. Why don't we try to bring our life to God and say, God, heal me. God, cleanse me. God, restore my relationship. God, use me. So along this journey of life, there's struggles and there's problems and there's pain. But Jesus resurrected from the grave that you and I could be resurrected from what the devil wants to bring into our lives and how he wants to destroy us. So let me transition from the Christmas story over to Easter, the resurrection of Christ. In Luke 24, verses one through six, now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, there came into the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. They went to the tomb. And he was not there, and it said they were much perplexed. And I believe there's people in this auditorium, sanctuary, watching on TV, you are much perplexed. They said he's not here, and in your situation, in your pain, in your struggle, in your loss, in your hurt, maybe you're in a place where you're feeling like, God, where are you? You're not here for me. Emmanuel, God with us. God is with you. You are not alone in your addiction. You are not alone in your strife, in your problem, in the adversity. You are not alone. And I pray when you leave today, your load will be a little lighter and your day will be brighter because you know Emmanuel, God is with you. Give God a hand clap and a shout of praise. Jesus was born to conquer the grave, and that's exactly what he did. And he did it that you and I could have life. Emmanuel, God with us. And we have a promise. When the Lord left, the Lord at the time when he was here in, the, in his body, he could only be in one place at a time. And a part of the plan was that he would be crucified, resurrected. He would be seated at the right hand side of the Father, interceding on your very behalf and mine today. But this is what he said before he left in John 14, verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. You are not alone. No matter what you go through, the Holy Spirit is with you. And the Holy Spirit is here today. He's here, as they just sang about and even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but listen, but you know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Can you imagine that? The God 
of this universe, the creator of all, is with us, and not only with us believers, he is in us. And the Bible said, greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. The Bible said, no weapon formed against us shall prosper because he is here in the heart. This is the church, you and I, the believers, do you hear me? The Holy Spirit is the comforter. It's the other helper. Can I tell you, I need help. I can't make it on my own. When I try to be on my own, I, I, I just ruined everything in my life. But he rescued me. And some of you may get tired of hearing the story, but you're gonna hear it again until I die. I was sitting on a bar stool on a Friday night, drinking my troubles away. My grandfather was on his deathbed. I had been raised right. I had went and left the, the, the faith for five or six years and, and everything was falling apart and I was rescued. And the Holy Spirit touched me on that bar stool and I looked at my friends and I said, listen, I love you, but I ain't coming back. And I never went back. And that's what I told that young man two weeks ago that's in rehab right now. If you go back to the so-called friends, you won't make it. Friends don't help you die. Friends don't help you kill yourself. Friends tell you lay it down and stop because there's a better life. Can anybody in the house testify and say, God has been good to you? <laughs> Believers are never alone. Struggles, pain, Draw nigh to God. He's here. Lord of creation, he's here, Scotty. Hallelujah. Giver of salvation, he's here. He'll save your soul. The Bible said today is the day of salvation. I'm glad he rescued me. Some 38, 39 years ago, I knelt down and gave my life to Christ. I've not been perfect since, but I've been saved and on my way to heaven. God will clean you up. God will use you. God will change your life if you'll draw nigh to God. Can anybody in the house give God another hand clap and a shout of praise? The giver of salvation. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Why would you put off to tomorrow when tomorrow may never come? James chapter four, verse 14, why you even worry about tomorrow? Your life is but a vapor. And it appears for a little while and it vanishes away. You're not gonna live forever, but you can if you come to Jesus. Because this life he gives us is everlasting. Hope of the nation, healer. Do you need a healing? Can, can I tell you that every Christian gets a healing? Every single one of us. The moment we're saved, he's healed our sin sick soul. And at the end of our journey, when this old body drops, absent from the bodies to be present with the Lord, it's the ultimate healing. I was thinking during this last song, I was imagining in my mind how beautiful this was, but can you imagine when you step out of this body and step into eternity in a place called heaven, what heaven is going to be like? Come on church, give him a hand. He's here, mighty deliverer, he's here. He, he will deliver you. I'm not against a 12 step program at all. I'm not against any self help books, but there is none of them that can do what Jesus can do for you that night that I left the bar and I ended up in a church house and I took about 12 steps down the aisle to an old fashioned altar and laid down my burdens and the Lord cleansed me and washed me. Why don't you try Jesus? Why don't you give your heart to the Lord and let the Lord clean you up? Has God God cleaned anybody up in this house? If he has, you ought to give him a hand. Woo! Friday night, we had mostly guests. I tried to behave myself, but you all used to me. Chain breaker, he's here. He'll break your chains. The chains that hold you in bondage. Listen to Psalm 68 and six. God setteth the solitary in families. He brings those out which are bound with chains. But the rebellious dry or dwell in a dry land, the rebellious. If you're here 
and there's a chain of pornography holding you, he'll bring you out. If there's a chain of addiction, he'll bring you out. If there's a chain of unforgiveness, bitterness, he'll bring you out. If there's a chain of fear, he'll bring you out. But if you want to rebel, he'll leave you right there. He's a gentleman, Wilma. The Holy Spirit's not going to make you do anything. But if you'll humble yourself, God will bring you out. Born to conquer the grave so that you and I could conquer not only the grave of death, but in Christ conquer the graves of life. I love life. I love every day of life. He's been good to me. He's been good to everyone in this room. And through my life, I've had a couple mountaintops and I've had a few valleys experiences, but he's still God. Do you hear me? I want to read out of Romans chapter eight. I told the media verse 37, but I'm going to do a little bit more. Verse 35 said, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. And then in verse 37, he said, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Verse 38, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God loves you. And God loves me. Do you hear me? The definition of Webster, excuse me, the Webster definition of the word grave an excavation in the ground for the burial of a corpse. Can I tell you, the devil wants to kill you, literally. He wants to kill you. He wants you to die without Jesus. He wants them to put your body in a grave and bury you without Christ that you'd never be resurrected again. That's what the devil wants to do. He wants to destroy. He wants to bury your dreams. Some of you have had amazing dreams, but chains have held you captive. Today, if you'll try Jesus, he'll let those chains fall from you. He wants to bury your joy, never let you have joy again. Peace, prosperity, all these things. It's not my word, it's what Jesus said to us. Jesus said in John 10 and 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. My life is full of joy. My relationship with my wife is full of joy and peace, and my children and our church family, because that's Jesus' plan. Here's our roadmap, here's our instruction to a great marriage, to a great family, to prosperity, to joy, to peace. And most people never pick it up, even church folk. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he needs to move on. <laughs> Life is one of the great words of scripture. Life is the opposite of perishing. Life is eternal. When I say life, Real life is knowing love, joy, and the peace of the Lord. Do you know that? Do you have that peace? Listen to me this morning as we come to a close. Oftentimes when things begin to fall apart, we start feeling like we've been left alone. You're not alone. We start feeling like we've been defeated. Friend, you're not defeated. He's the God of second chances, third chances, fourth chances. He's a God of many, many chances. So I don't know what grave you're battling, but you leave it with the Lord 
and he'll give you another chance. Can somebody say amen? God never promised not one time that our way would be easy. God never promised you wouldn't suffer cancer. God never promised that I would never have the strokes that I had last year. God never promised, George, the difficulties that you would have, that you would never have those. But God always promised throughout the book that he would always be with us. In Isaiah 41 and 10, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. And I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. In Isaiah 46 and four, even to your old age and your gray hairs, I am he. I am he who will sustain you. Listen, he said, I've made you. Then he said, I will carry you and I will sustain you and I will rescue you. What a promise. God wants to rescue you. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I want to speak to those that have prayed and asked Christ into your life at some time. Have you been struggling? Be honest with yourself. It's easy to lie to yourself. Be honest with yourself. Is there areas in my life that the enemy has got a hold of? And he's burying those very things that God wants to bless me with. My relationship with my wife, with my children. Have I allowed an addiction to grab a hold of me and I don't even realize it and daily I'm dying? Have I failed? Have I fallen short? The Bible said we've all failed and we've all fallen short. The Lord wants to rescue you deliver you, heal you, cleanse you. So if you're a believer and you feel like there's an area that the Lord is speaking to your heart right now, would you slip your hand up high? Slip your hand up high, wow. All over the building. As every head is still bowed and every eye is closed. And now I wanna stretch my hands towards you. And I wanna pray for you. Father in heaven, You've seen the hearts before the hands, everyone up. And Lord, I ask you to rescue. I ask you to heal. I ask you to deliver. I ask you to cleanse. Father, I pray that you give each individual that raised their hand a peace. I pray you restore relationships, marriages. I pray you bring prodigal children back to their families. I pray you clear our minds from what this world would like to bring filth into our minds. Rescue and deliver those that are hung up in areas that you don't want them to be. Now every head still bowed and every eye closed and I won't come to you, won't single you out, but is there one here this morning? That if death knocked on your door, heaven would not be your home. You say, well, pastor, I don't know. Well, Jesus said he was the way. He is the way, the truth and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by Jesus. You've got to pray. It doesn't matter if you're a member of a church or you've been baptized. That doesn't mean nothing. You've got to ask Christ to forgive you of your sins. And we've all sinned. So if you're here this morning and you'd like to do that, again, no one's coming to you. I'm not going to single you out. Would you pray? First, slip your hand up high. Make a confession that today I want to ask Christ to forgive me of my sins. I see your hands. Hold them up high, people. Come on. Hold them up high. That's right. Adults all over the room. Several young children. I see those hands all over the room. I want Terry for a moment. I see your hands, sir. I see those hands. I see those hands. Listen to me. Some of you have tried everything, everything, everything else. You know the song, looking for love in all the wrong places. You're in the right place today. Give Jesus a chance. He died for you. He died. Can you imagine that? Filthy sinners like we are. 
and he died for us. And now he's here with us, wanting to rescue you. So 10 more seconds, somebody else, slip your hand. Somebody else, say, I, I need Jesus, I need Jesus. Then everyone, I see those hands. Everyone that raised your hand, I want you to raise your head and look right at me and open up your eyes. And I want you to mean this from the bottom of your heart. I want you to pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, today I need rescued. Lord Jesus, I've made mistakes. I've sinned. I've hurt myself. I've hurt my family. I've hurt people that love me. And God, I hurt you. But today, sincerely, I ask you to forgive me, to deliver me, to heal me, to rescue me, to give me another chance. And for the rest of my life, I'll do my very best to live for you and to serve you. In Jesus' name I pray. Friend, if you prayed that prayer, I want to be the first to welcome you to the family of God. Can everyone in the house thank the Lord for touching people's hearts? Amen? Amen. Before the finale, I'll say one more thing. If you're going through a struggle, whatever it is, and you need help, I want you to call me. I want you to call me and we will get you help, all right? Thank you for listening to the Jewel City Podcast. You can join us in person Sundays at 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. We have something for all people and all ages. Or join our live stream at 10 a.m. 